Jillio, you told me a Wolfpacker was going to get traded today at the NFL trade deadline. I just had the wrong one. Apparently you did have the wrong one. I guess there was some speculation that Garner's own Naheem Hines was going to get dealt by the Colts because the Colts are in tank mode. Full on. <laughs> <laughs> Full on tank mode. Are they trying to get Victor Wembenyama? Is that they, what's happening? They might be legitimately confused. It could be. Like They keep hearing about this. Oh my God, have you seen this guy? Colts are like, yes, he's our next QB. He's tall Seven enough. Four. Let's go. You'll see over the line. He could definitely avoid the Baker Mayfield tip pass problems. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> but no, it was not Naheem Hines that got traded today. It's actually Bradley Chubb who got dealt by the Denver Broncos to the Miami Dolphins because uh, the, the, the NFL man, it's such a copycat league. Uh, we've seen that in recent years teams be aggressive when they feel like they're in their windows. Maybe the Rams were trailblazers. Have you ever seen that meme of Michael Jordan? where it's just him with a face and it just says, screw those kids, I'm cleaning it up here. It's like, F them kids. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Well, the Rams are kind of in that boat, too, when it comes to picks. Like, screw those picks, man. We're trying to win now. Which, you know, affects how they can rebuild as things don't look like they're going great this year. But that's their problem. But we've seen aggressive teams. We saw the Buffalo Bills add Stephon Diggs. We know about A.J. Brown and the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, we've obviously have seen the Rams uh, pull this off, and now we're seeing some moves here and there to try to get better when they can. Bears made a move, and now the Dolphins are making a move to get Bradley Chubb. I like it. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to knock this. I, I, I actually like where these things are going. I like that teams are being aggressive. I like that they're viewing windows and trying to take advantage. Of Fans should be happy about that. And maybe I'm also looking at it longingly because I, I wish the Panthers were like this, that we had a team around here that was being aggressive and trying to win now. But obviously the Panthers are not in that boat right now. But Bradley Chubb is going to be a Miami Dolphin. Uh, also, according to Adam Schefter, as the trade deadline looms, the Falcons are planning to trade wide receiver Calvin Ridley to the Jaguars. Uh, so there, that's that's the flurry of moves that's happened right before the trade. What what? He's not eligible to play. No, he's not. He's not. That's, he's still he's that's super right. rare. He's still out because of the gambling thing. Totally yeah. forgot about that. Absolutely forgot about that. So anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on. According to Albert Breer, the Dolphins got three first rounders back in the deal with the 49ers that they did to give up to, to go up for Trey Lance. Miami traded all have now traded all three of them. They used the twenty one pick package to trade up to get Jalen Waddle. 22 pick they sent to the Chiefs for Tyreek Hill and now the 23 pick they sent to the Broncos for Bradley Chubb there's still like a Laramie Tunsil situation I think some of these picks also if you don't remember Laramie Tunsil he was the guy who fell in the draft because there was a video that was released right before the draft of him wearing a gas mask smoking weed so the, it all it, it, it that might actually be one of the most influential nights in NFL history in terms of trade picks and all the tentacles that have come from that but there's your uh there's your update now let's talk about a trade that didn't happen according to albert breer of si.com the rams offered their first round picks in 2024 and 2025 oh, to oh. the panthers okay the panthers for brian burns and the panthers said nah we're good we knew last week that there was a team, according to Adam Schefter, that had offered some first-round picks to get Brian Burns, and the Panthers declined it. But now we know who it was and what the deal was, and it was first-round picks for 2024 and 2025. They said no. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it, too. Because you got to remember, well, there's a couple factors here. The first one is, do also, you... Also, are those going to be good picks? There's a couple factors here. That's one of them. <laughs> right? We don't know how good those picks are going to be right. in 2024, 2025. Then there's that. It's 2024 and 2025. What do we know about the NFL? Quick, not for long. I mean, do we think that Scott Fitterer will still be the general manager in 2024, 25? The guy who's making the, the decisions here? Yeah. Do we know if he's going to be the guy in 2024 and 2025? We yeah. don't know. And then there's the most important part of this equation. How do you feel about Brian Burns? Elite pass rushers are not exactly something that... They're, they're a premium. Everything's a premium. Wide receivers, depending on who it is, not necessarily a premium. Running backs, as we know, not exactly a premium in the grand scheme of things. 
But elite pass rushers, which is what they feel in Brian Burns at age 24 and he's due a contract extension, they'll try to make the numbers work. I know the Panthers are up against it with a lot of bad deals after bad deals. Well, but getting I, rid of McCaffrey's cap number goes a long way in being able to re-sign Brian Burns. Also, we have to keep in mind, too, um, the salary cap, like Birds, not real. I mean, somehow, some way, the, the New Orleans Saints always found a way to make it work. The Rams somehow make it work. So I'm not going to get too wrapped up in that. If you feel that Brian Burns is the key piece of the young group in Carolina, well, then you keep him, especially at that position. I, I think what the Dolphins are showing here are that players are actually more valuable. The right players are more valuable than picks. The Dolphins, the original deal that, that ended up happening with the Dolphins when they were basically tanking mm-hmm. was they traded Minka Fitzpatrick to the Steelers for a first-round pick, and they traded Laramie Tunsil to the Texans for a first-round pick. The Texans had deluded themselves into thinking they were an, an, a Super Bowl contender. Yes. And that pick ended up being in the top five, I believe, that they ended up with. So they turned the Tunstall pick around in the Trey Lance deal where they got three number ones from that deal for a quarterback, right? Well, think about who they've used two of those picks on. One of them is Tariq Hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you're going to find Tariq Hill in the draft? No. And now you get Bradley Chubb. I mean, Bradley Chubb, Brian Burns. You know, Bradley Chubb has more of an injury history than Brian Burns does. Yeah, that's, but, that's the only know, issue with Chubb. He's, he's mean, injury prone. Th- that's Those are two stud players that you're getting for those two picks. And now, if you're the Dolphins, guess what? Those picks, you're going to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. So you're, those picks won't have the same value. Yeah. So to me, it's a little bit of a no-brainer. Well, the other thing, too, with the Dolphins, and we've seen this specifically with the Dolphins, those picks don't necessarily mean you're going to draft somebody. All right, so let's take the Panthers and Brian Burns. You're taking that 2024 and 2025 pick. Well, what I'm saying, you're not going to actually use them in the draft. I mean, right. You're going to use them as You're going to use them as capital to go get somebody that you feel is a guy right now. Like you said, the value of an active player, somebody that you know you're going to get this now rather than taking a flyer on a guy. If the argument for trading Brian Burns is that you suspect that the Carolina Panthers will then take the 2024 and 2025 picks and then try to use that to find some other playmakers, that would be silly since you already have a playmaker sure. in Brian Burns. Again, it gets back to the premium of the position and somebody at that age that seems to actually have it. A guy who looks elite. You'll make it work financially with a contract extension some way, somehow. So I'm cool with what the Carolina Panthers did not do with Brian Burns. Plus, we kind of saw this on Sunday. And I can see where this kind of emboldens the Panthers to think we're not too far away from turning it around. They already made a monumental move in trading Christian McCaffrey, and mm-hmm. they got a pretty good deal for it from the San Francisco 49ers, and they already dealt Robbie Anderson. But specifically, the Christian McCaffrey deal was pretty damn big in the grand scheme of things. And what happened after the trade? After two games without Christian McCaffrey, what have we seen? I mean, Deontay Foreman has emerged as the player who they thought they could be. Yes. Thought he could be. So to me, this is this is a classic case of we already made a huge move and we're still pretty decent. I mean, kick two field goals and they win this game and they're sitting atop the NFC South. And as you like to point out, when it comes to the NFL, it's not like you're that far away. They got some good pieces. Look at the Seahawks. You just you do have to draft well though. At you some do. point, you do have to use the capital wisely. 